Hey folks, we're looking at another classic Tony Rice break this week. This time we're working off the Bluegrass album band record, California Connection. By the way, we're gonna skip that history lesson as well. If you're still looking for some of that Bluegrass album band history, you can find that on my video for how to play Blue Ridge Cabin Home, and I teach Tony Rice's break from that first Bluegrass album band record. Also, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Daniel. Daniel sent me his transcription of this tune months ago, and I didn't really get to it until a couple days ago. And his version was super close. I made a couple tweaks, I made a couple changes, and I tried to dial it in so it's a little closer to the recording. But Daniel's the one that got me started on this. So the free tab on my website of this break, you, you owe it all to Daniel. You gotta give Daniel some love, is what I'm telling you. Give Daniel love in the comments. This goes without saying, but if you like my videos and want to support what I do, you should check out LessonsWithMarcel.com, get some tabs, some merch, maybe some Skype lessons. If you're more into the free stuff, you should read the blog, you should get all those free tabs you can, and you should go to the Instagram account at Jazzandgrass for a huge library of free bluegrass licks. But enough of the ad, it's time for today's lesson. First, we'll do some tech stuff, talk about any unique passages and learn some scale shapes. And then we'll do that full breakdown and we'll look at every aspect of the break, note by note. Let's do it. Cool, so the first thing that we need are some scales to understand Tony's perspective and his note choice. And the first one we're going to go with is the almighty open G major pentatonic shape. Um, if you watched my last video that was all about doing exciting things with your pentatonic scales, this will be a little bit of a recap. So when Tony's not using that G major pentatonic shape, he's using a minor pentatonic shape with an added blue note. This scale we would call a G minor blue scale, but it's really just the G minor pentatonic with the flat fifth degree added. As we've seen in the Blue Ridge Cabin Home and the Old Train How to Play videos, Tony Rice really likes to play arpeggios over D chords, and he does that in this break too. So let's get a reminder of what that D major arpeggio looks like, and we're gonna use some of it today. Another thing that we see a lot of is the minor third to the major third. Tony does this a bunch over the G chord and the D chord in this break. So let's look at a couple places that we can do that over those specific chords. And lastly, Tony plays this really weird floating line uh, or a line with an escape note. Basically, he's, he's up the neck and he uses an open string. However you want to describe that, that's what Tony does. This line might be a little unique or strange to a lot of you. So let's just cover it here so you can be prepared for it later. Um, what you're watching out for is that open E string and how it lets me shift my hand back down. The other thing you might look for is that I wanna put my pinky on fifth fret of the G string. That's a really careful fingering position that's going to make the rest of it lay out very nicely. Cool, that's everything you need to know about how to play the break. What happens if you watch the performance again and try to spot all those things that we just talked about? Now it's time for the breakdown. Let's look at everything up close and see if we can get in Tony's brain a little bit. All right, great. I'm looking at the first measure on this page here and I'm seeing the kickoff. It's a variation of this kickoff that we've all heard before. Tony Rice is doing it with some syncopation and with a flat fifth degree. Um, now if we, we take this and we try to break it down so you can think like Tony, the first thing that's important to us is probably the timing here, that syncopation. So beats one and two are rest. So one and two and three and four and. That's how you want to think about it um, when you're counting. Now, if you want to think about pick strokes, you can think about it this way. Up, up, down, up, down, up. 
that's the first thing that's probably going to throw a lot of you because uh, if you're not used to hearing that or feeling that, that can be real hard to play and uh, get out on your instrument. Great, let's look at the first line after that. So I'm looking at the next two measures. <laughs> So if we break down the note choice here, we can see that all of this kind of falls into the uh, minor pentatonic camp. Uh, and by minor pentatonic, I mean our G minor blues scale that we talked about. Of course, that's just the pentatonic scale with the flat fifth degree. Um, the very first note of the form is actually that flat fifth going up to the fifth. Get our root, we get this triplet here. Once again, that's the flat fifth. This time going down to the fourth. Um, then we have our minor third to major third something else we talked about that we knew that Tony was going to use. This is the minor third of G as in G minor, going to the major third of G as in G major. As we get into the second measure, see this is still very minor uh, blues scale. That three open G is all right in that position. After that we get this three to four, which is the minor to major third over a D chord because we're about to go to a D chord. This is something that we've seen in a lot of our Tony Rice videos where Tony preemptively starts playing over the next chord. He does it all over the Bluegrass Album Band recordings. So right, he's thinking minor third to major third over the D chord, as in D minor to D major. And after that, we get our uh, D major arpeggio, just like I said we would. It's a little bit different than I gave you in the music. Um, but if we're thinking uh, notes of uh, a scale, this would be one, two, three, and then we'd have five and one again. It's almost like a little pentatonic scale, not quite though. If we had the sixth, we would make it there. He gives us some throwaway notes, right? He just picks those to, to fill the space there. And then we get this floating line, which is very difficult to play fast. Um, but let's break it down. So I'm starting with my ring finger and I'm going to my index finger. I'm playing 7-5, that's down up. And then I'm playing 6th fret in my open E string. That's also down up right there. Um, next down up is going to be 3rd fret, then 5th fret. So going over that much again. All right, ring finger, index finger, down up. Using my middle finger now. 6 open, down up. Then 3-5, down up. Think of those two note groupings, it's gonna help you a lot. Great, next up, next line, we got. Hopefully I don't have to explain that to you. That's the minor third to the major third over the D chord again. Sweet, so that whole floating line was this. Now I actually did something that I don't wanna do when I play the whole line. I'll show you what the right way to do it. I want to play that fifth fret on my G string. I want to play that with my pinky. So that sets me up to play the next note, which is going to be second fret down here. Awesome. Let's keep going. After that, we've got this real bluesy line. Of course, this is the G minor pentatonic or G blues scale. He's sliding from the seventh to the root. After that, we're just descending the scale. We get to sixth fret on the G string. Once again, that is our flat fifth. Um, he pops down, he plays our minor third to the major third, down to the root, just like we knew he would. Um, we get down here, and he ends with the almighty G run, which we all should know by now. All right, if you made it this far, you're a boss. Let's finally play that break up to speed with the tab. You can look at all those things and try to play along. Um, just for your reference, my performance when I played it, I believe is at 95% of the original tempo. You can start slow on your own. If you can work it up to how fast I play it, then maybe you can bridge that last 5% and play it along with the recording. And uh, my, my speed will be like a little stepping stone for you. Hey man, that was easy. That was a that was a nice, easy going, just smooth lesson, you know. No weird stuff. The cat didn't show up. It was good. I like that. All right, if you like taking a lesson from the biggest, baddest Billy Goat in the barnyard, you can scroll down. You can leave a comment on this video. You can like this video. You can subscribe to this channel. But more importantly, you can go to my website, lessonswithmarcel.com, 
There you can check out a bunch of tabs. Half of them are free, half of them are paid. They really support this channel, so I appreciate that if you do purchase one. Um, you can also get some merch. You can sign up for Skype lessons. There is a blog there with a bunch of free bluegrass information. And lastly, I do run an Instagram account called Jazz and Grass with my friend Lyman Lipke. We post a new jazz or bluegrass lick every single day of the week. So please check that out if you're interested in more vocabulary. That's all I got right now, so I guess I'll see you next Wednesday for another Bluegrass video. Bring them bells at the crossroads Through the valley below My heart was running from town That midnight train Spilled her blood at the cross